Hey, 4C Divers, thank you for tuning in. This is our 4C Facebook Live, and we have an exciting presentation planned for you guys tonight. Guys, everybody say hello to Alex. Hello. All right. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. If you don't know my name, my name is Nicole. I'm your social media director for 4C, and we are always looking to see if you guys are enjoying the presentation, so make sure that you hit that thumbs up button smiley face or heart emoji, let us know. And in the comments section, go ahead and say hello to us. Tell us where you're listening in from. We want to know. Also, we want to know uh, if you guys are out diving to go see the Goliath groupers because they are here. They are here in the South Florida area right now. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later because our presentation <laughs> is about Goliath groupers. Hi, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Um, make sure you go over to the 4C Facebook page. Um, I'm sorry. The, <laughs> you are on the Facebook page. Sorry. Go to the 4C website, www.force-e.com. Go ahead and click the link for tonight's uh, presentation. Go in the tab, go to events, and register. You have until 6.45 to register. We have a raffle at the end, so make sure that you register and you might win something. Woo! <laughs> all right. Look at all these people listening in. Thank you, guys. All right. all right. This is a great topic because if you are somebody here in South Florida, you know about the Goliath Grouper aggregation that's happening right now. Uh, if you do not live here in South Florida and you're like, what do you mean by this Goliath Grouper aggregation? Well, we are going to enlighten you in this presentation that we have planned. So let's go ahead and bring in our presentation. Okay. And we have, it's called Our Friend Wilbur. Tonight's presentation, we're going to be talking about a specific grouper that lives here in South Florida. So let's go ahead and advance the slide. Who is Wilbur? Well, First, we need to know that there are two types of Goliath groupers. There's ones that live year round in South Florida and we call those resident groupers. And then there's the ones that travel from the Carolinas or Northern Florida and they will be aggregating from August to October on the wrecks in the Palm Beach area. Um, this is the only place that we know that is documented that the animals do this behavior. So um, it's really great that it's in our backyard because we get to take dive boats out and go see these guys aggregate between those months. Um, and like I said, we also have resident groupers. So some of these wrecks, you might notice that there's the same groupers that live there year round. And one of them we have named Wilbur. Uh, he is located in Boynton Beach um, on a specific wreck. Uh, it's called the Caster. It sits in about how many feet of water? 105. 105. So we do ask that you have the advanced certification or higher and that you dive nitrox, enriched air nitrox, when you do these dives um, because it is a little bit of a deeper dive. So if you do not have those um, uh, certifications, let 4C help you get to there so you can go and see not only Wilbur, but other Goliath groupers as well. In this picture that you see here, that is uh, Wilbur standing up front, and they've got the gr Goliath grouper aggregation in the back there. That is at the um, at the stern or at the um, bow? I think that's, that's the, the bow. That's the bow. That's the bow. When it used to sit upright, now it's tilted a little bit because of the storms. Yep. Uh, so the the caster um, was sitting upright, and then um, over a period of storms, uh, has now listed to um, one side and it's kind of interesting um this is uh going into the past so the the caster is really well known for this aggregation and alex you've actually um seen how many in the past uh groupers on this wreck <coughs> we used to time? run a quick inventory and go with the scooter all around and try to count them and about 10 years ago we used to see about 200 goliaths on on a, just a single dive in 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 this area on the caster only keep in mind there's other wrecks nearby that they also have goliaths but for example on this shot you can see shas out of the stern i think there's about 50 or 60 goliaths on just one frame that's what we used to see about 10 years ago okay mm -hmm. and um recently we've noticed that there's been 
a decline of how many groupers that are hanging out on the caster about how many would you see now during the aggregation? We were the other day. Well, I, I, the aggregation haven't peaked yet. It usually peaks some time during August and September. And is um, the peak is usually when the moon is completely dark. So it's a new moon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we haven't peaked yet, but um, it, Last year, I think we, we got to count about 40-something, 50, 50 mm -hmm. Goliaths on the wreck. And just recently, last weekend, uh, it was kind of weird. Uh, they had poor viz and not a lot of current. So yeah. when you don't have a lot of current on this particular dive site is when the groupers move off into the sand area and they're not uh, necessarily on the wreck. So um, you got to have the... like the type of uh, conditions yes. that these, these guys like. They like current, which I know you as divers don't really like to swim in the current, but they do like the current and they do. Um, do they have a temperature, do you think, um, I'm, gauge? I'm not going to guess about temperature because yeah. I'm not sure they... Because there sometimes is a thermocline mm. down there and sometimes it's not. So um, it's it, it's kind of uh, an interesting thing. Uh, some some of the scientists might be able to answer that. We are not scientists, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Nicole. This is Alex. <laughs> we do not have PhDs. So I'm, I'm a boat captain, <laughs> but I can tell you by experience. I've been diving this wreck for the last 20 years, and I can tell you day by day pretty much how things change. What I can observe. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, you said you said that maybe um, when the caster listed a little bit, maybe that was a little of a yeah. difference that the animals... If you notice the previous picture from Mr. Walter Stern, it, it was showing the upright bow and they used to love just line up on that bow. I mean, from top to bottom, it was just like an army of Goliaths. Now that the bow is tilted, they're looking for different structures to to to, to, to look, I mean, they, they always look for the sweet spot when they don't have to spend too much energy to be on one spot. Uh, currents tend to be strong in this wreck. And, and what they do is they love to sit up front, up current from any structure. And they found this sweet spot when they get a, a little pushback from the structure. So the current hits the structure and then it pushes back. And that's where you, you'll see them. You may go down there and there is maybe two knot current and you see this guy standing right there still and they are not even moving their fins. So that's what we call it a sweet spot. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you guys want to know what's the history of Wilbur? Well, um, you know, it wasn't well known to document this stuff, uh, especially when you're not doing scientific research. So, um, Alex, uh, your first documentation of Wilbur was in September of 2013. That's when they first started seeing him. And this is actually a picture that Alex took um, of Wilbur at, um, on that date. And as you can see, the difference of size between the diver and Wilbur there. Um, and he's teeny tiny. He's a little guy. Yes. At the time, I was uh, hired as a dive guy for the wreck. So I was there just about every single day, multiple dives. And uh, we noticed with uh, this guy that is on the picture, is, uh, his name is Alan Egan. Uh, he's a, a photographer. And we noticed that this little fish was sitting on the side. He wasn't following the whole aggregation, like staying into the current. He was just by himself right there. And once I noticed it, every single dive, I will go to that corner and the guy was still there. He, he didn't agree with everybody else. He, he was a loner. And after a few dives, um, a, a good friend of mine, her name is Lisa Kelly, she suggested, hey, let's name it and start keeping track of it. And that's how Wilbur was born. And since then, I mean, we've been keeping track and, and following his... <laughs> His movements. <laughs> His movements, yeah. yeah. Um, and so one thing to note when you're looking at this fish, um, he's probably not much older than 20 years. It, no, no. On this picture, we, we came out with a, an agreement. We say that this fish, they don't move apparently out of their mongrels for a mm -hmm. few years. So we say maybe on this picture, it's a seven-year-old fish. Okay. Something like that. Seven, eight, eight who knows? Now, the only way to really tell the um, age of a Goliath grouper, unfortunately, ugh, 
you actually have to bring them up and kill them and then they do no. an autopsy <laughs> and they look at like the rings i think in their ears or something i, I thought think they I do that with trees yeah well no that's <laughs> it. yeah exactly uh so that's how they do um yeah. you know age studies but we don't want to do that especially yeah. not with wilbur right? i mean <laughs> on this picture you can tell how small and tiny the mm -hmm. guy is absolutely they, definitely he was so he's a baby he's not a mature adult so he's not in the um mating range so why would he be with the aggregation? He's not able to make Right. No, he, he didn't know how to fit in the aggregation. He will stay. As a matter of fact, um, Goliath's grouper, they love to be up current. I was telling you, up current from any structure. On the caster, once in a while, we get south current instead of a north current. And you will see that all the Goliaths that will move to the other side of the caster, and I will go look for Wilbur. Where is he? He's still on the wrong side of the ship. Mm. On the on the wrong side of the wreck, he didn't know that I have to move with everybody else. He he was definitely on his own world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's Wilbur as a little juvenile. So we, uh, sorry, we. I, I talked like I was measuring him. Yeah. Alex, you started measuring Wilbur um, back in 2015 um, mm -hmm. just to kind of get the sizing difference. So if you look here, <laughs> there's the measurements. In October of 2015, he measured, that is his length, right? 52 yeah. uh, inches. And then his girth was 47 inches. And then in May of 2016, 57 inches uh, was the length. 49 inches was the girth. And September of 2016, he measured 62 inches uh, for the length and 50 for the girth. So as you can see, this fish does grow every year um, a couple inches. De definitely. And thanks so much for people that helped me to do these measurements. It was not easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So we are going to show you pictures of Wilbur throughout the years. Um, so here's in 2015. There's a diver, there's a reference of how little he was, okay? Um, this is a great um, photo because this was also in 2015. The photo on the right, wait, is that your guys' right? The bluer photo <laughs> <laughs> with the white scarring on Wilbur. Um, Alex, what is that? Yeah, what happened is uh, we were doing double dips on the caster morning and afternoon. So I went down on my first dive on the morning, say, hey, Wilbur, everything's okay. Nothing happened, not eventful. On the second dive in the morning, suddenly I go down and the guy shows up with a couple of scars. And he came over to me like saying, look what I did, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck? What can I do with you? And then, anyhow, so I left him there with the, with the scars, but um, he, he must go, I, I will assume, through some kind of a hatch and, and he must have, was in a rush and, and he scratched himself. But the good news about it is that like within 24 hours, I got back to the caster and look at Wilbur on the other side. You can still see a little bit of the scar, but look how much he healed in 24 hours. So that's amazing. Yeah. The healing powers of this fish. Um, at, at the beginning, when I saw it so healed, I didn't think it was Wilbur, but then you can miss it. I, I mean, mean, I was going to ask him what kind of moisturizer he uses on his face <laughs> because I want that healing cream, okay? Because I want to erase some of the wrinkles I've got from years of <laughs> I diving <don't> know. <laughs> and sun. <laughs> um, okay, so that's a really cool story. That was 2015 yeah. that you saw this and documented that. All right, in 2016, uh, if anybody recognizes the diver in this photo, this is Pavel. He's one of our 4C divers. Um, this is Wilbur with Pavel, and um, look at he's getting a little bit bigger. 2018, another diver you guys should recognize. That is Miss Rachel from our 4C Boynton store, and she's there with uh, Wilbur. One thing that we noticed in 2018 is if you look on his jaw, I don't know if you can see it very well, but you can see that there was a hook in line that was there. Yeah, on the left cheek, I mean, we call it a hook, but it's not necessarily a hook, but he has a line that is, I don't know how, he got in trouble. I mean, it got to touch in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so from 2018, for a couple of years, he was carrying that jewelry in there. Okay, so when you, uh, when you start seeing some of these pictures, um, it's... Not sure if you guys can see it in this one in 2020. Uh, he has that line hanging out of that jaw there. Mm. Um, it's uh, still there. And he has a little bit of scarring on that right. Uh, I guess that's his left cheek. Left cheek, yeah. right. Um, 
what happened is this fish is extremely easy to approach it. And I'm sure that divers has the best intention. And they were trying to remove that. So on 2020, he became a little apprehensive of divers because every time he will get close, people will yank out of it. So then he started to keep a little more distance. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. From the divers. Okay. Yeah. And then in 2021, you can see that is still in his left jaw. Um, not as much scarring um, there. No. And now I saw him about a month ago and it's gone. Yep. So in 2022, um, Alex didn't have his camera at the time, but he was able to identify that it was Wilbur and it was uh, not there anymore. So it did either rust out or somehow it came out. Um, we don't know. <laughs> <Someone junked laughs> or somebody yanked it off. Yeah, We're not sure. Um, so that's 2021. So Wilbur now. OK, how big is Wilbur now? <laughs> we don't know. Um, unfortunately, Alex has been going out lately and he hasn't been able to measure him because Wilbur is not on the caster currently. Uh, you went out last weekend. Yeah, he's about a mile and a quarter south of the caster. Um, there's an outfall uh, pipe that comes out of Delray Beach and he's been living in that area. I went today specifically to measure him because I wanted to bring you guys fresh news, but I couldn't find him. What it makes me believe that there's a big chance that he's heading back to the caster. Mm -hmm. um, I was on the caster a week ago. I didn't see him. Today, he was not on that area where I thought he would be. So um, as soon as uh, we figure out where he is, we will post something on on the page okay yeah but if you look at this photo all right uh look at the size difference he he is now this is oh, uh this from the first, from the first picture. picture with that guy uh -huh. i mean he's big like he's not as big as some of the big like i don't know no i call them volkswagen beetle yeah uh sized groupers it, it's not a volkswagen yet but he's no, getting there he is he's getting there um okay so what makes Wilbur stand out? Look at this photo, guys. Uh, that's me, Nicole. <laughs> um, he's standing out. So, uh, Alex, you mentioned that he's very approachable. So, let's see. Can you guys pick out who Wilbur is in the aggregation in this photo? Let's see. Can you pick out who it is now? How about now? Can you figure out who Wilbur is? How about now? There he is. So, um, that series of photos is kind of a cool um, behavioral uh, series because you're seeing how he can hang out and be with the group. But then when you bring divers in, he likes to come out at you. And that's why he stands out. Um, you know, his behavior has changed a little bit over time because, um, like Alex was saying, if he had that hook in him, uh, he didn't like divers coming up and trying to rip it out. But, um, you know, <coughs> nowadays, uh, you know, because he hasn't been on the caster, we're not sure how he's interacting with the divers. Yeah, one other behavior that I noticed, um, and this is pure speculation, but I'm almost positive about that. He's extremely friendly with me. I never got any problems. One day I went down with the spear gun. He wouldn't even get close to me. So here is my thoughts. Some people that they don't know Wilbur, maybe they went down there, they were hunting, and they see a Goliath following them. They didn't like it. Maybe they poke him. So he learned his lesson. Now, if you have a spear gun or a pole spear, he will not get close to you because he knows he will get, get poked. So at least he learns, right? Yeah. And um, so keep that in mind. So if you have a spear gun, the chances are he will not approach you. Um, oh, I now, have a question. Yes, but I, if, I, I thought of something okay, else. Go ahead, go ahead. If you have a spear gun, there may be another Goliath that will approach you because there's some Goliaths on the castle that they recognize the spear gun and they know what you're doing. So they're going to not only approach you, but they're going to follow you through the whole dive mm -hmm. because they're waiting for you to shoot a fish so they can steal it and eat for free. Go ahead. Um, I want to make a disclosure, guys, because uh, we're talking about spear fishing. If you have a fish, Make sure <laughs> that you take care of it or even lobster because I have had um, these guys rip them out of my hands and you don't want that happening. Um, you also don't want to shoot fish and feed it to them because we don't want to make that a learned behavior, right? Definitely not. I mean, this is, will be a Volkswagen Beetle pulling <laughs> you behind. I mean, Yep. Okay, so let's go ahead. Why is uh, Wilbur so popular? Well, we call him a supermodel. Um, I don't know if you guys watch Shark Week. OK, uh, but a lot of that is filmed in Tiger Beach and there is a tiger shark in Tiger at Tiger Beach called Emma. 
She's like a 15 foot tiger shark and we call her a supermodel because she comes right up to divers and always is photographed. So she's actually probably the um, most photographed wild animal uh, in, in the world because people can go to that site and see her and get photos and she's all over Shark Week and other documentaries. Um, so Wilbur's a close second. Uh, and when I say that, it's because, you know, he's so approachable that he comes right up and look at that shot. He's right in that camera, getting his, uh, you know, pretty shot going his, you know, yeah. blah, blah, boom. and, uh, you know, the thing is, is, uh, divers love to take photos of these guys. So, um, that's why this dive and with this grouper, he is sought out for. Okay. Um, all right. So Wilbur's also been in the news. Hold on. Let me, oh yeah, there we go. Um, if you guys know what Mission Blue is, uh, Sylvia Earle, she's like the bomb <laughs> when it comes to ocean conservation and science. Uh, her website actually um, you know, talks about the Goliath groupers, and she talks specifically about Wilbur. So he's been in the news there. Um, and also um, some news articles. There's actually one right here, the Daily Mail in the UK picked up uh, photos that Wayne McWilliams did with me and Wilbur, and uh, they ran a, uh, a piece about it. Um, what's interesting, I'm going to go ahead and give you, uh, <laughs> I'm going to give you the, the scenario here. Um, I had, um, I had no clue, but I am actually pregnant in this photo. Yeah. So <laughs> I actually uh, was, oh, I think I was like 10 weeks along and I didn't know. <laughs> so I did the dive. And then right after I found out, I was like, wait, but he followed me the whole dive. I mean, this fish would not leave me alone. There was other divers in the water, but for some reason, he just wanted oh to God. rub up against me, love on me. He wanted to be next to me. And we did a double dip and he did it on both dives. And so Wayne, the photographer, took advantage of this and called me the Goliath Risper. And I'm like, well, I, I mean, I didn't do anything to make him come to me. But then, interesting, a couple of days later, I found out I was pregnant. So I was That's like, nice. does this animal know like something like they say that dolphins can tell because they have the echolocation, mm -hmm. but I just didn't know what that all meant, why he followed me specifically. Um, but also you say that he follows you a lot. So maybe um, because I dove, a, I dove, is that the right yeah. terminology? I've done a lot of dives on the caster with Wilbur, but um, I've never had him be like glued to my side like he was mm -hmm. um, on that dive. So that was pretty cool. Um, and oh, somebody is mentioning there's another shark up in Jupiter called Snooty. He's uh, uh, he's yeah. also another shark that's um, widely photographed. Okay, so yeah. definitely all these pictures are from Boynton. Yep. Right? Yeah. So yeah. it's not. It's this animal stays in the Boynton Beach area. Um, let me go here because I want to show you guys a video. So give me a second to bring it into the stream. There it is. Okay. So this was by. Um, Jonathan Bird's Blue World, and this is a video that he was um, featured in. The MV Caster lies in 110 feet of water. It's a 240-foot-long freighter that was seized by the Coast Guard in 1999 because it was carrying 10,000 pounds of cocaine hidden in a shipment of sugar. In 2001, Palm Beach County's Artificial Reef Program sank the ship to create an oasis for marine life. Over the years, hurricanes have broken the ship up a bit, but that doesn't reduce its appeal to the fish. The big stern section stands up high off the bottom, and a couple of Goliath grouper like to hang around. It's easy to see why. The ship looks like a fish condo complex with all kinds of great places to hide, both inside and outside. Soon we set out to find a friendly grouper known as Wilbur. Because the ship is at an angle, everything looks a little odd. A crooked stair. 
staircase. A lopsided air intake. The rack has grown a lovely coral garden. And this, clearly someone's science experiment. No idea what that is. I take a swim down a long hallway looking for Wilbur. No sign of him. I'm starting to get worried that he isn't home. But when I pop out the other end, there he is waiting for us. Wilbur isn't shy. He allows me to swim right up and film him at close range. He isn't even bothered by my bright lights. He knows that divers come to visit the wreck all the time and they won't hurt him. Cue the model. Now it's Dave's job to get in the shot for scale. But he notices something disturbing. Wilbur has a hook and a piece of fishing line in his mouth. And he seems to know that Dave will be able to help. Wilbur allows Dave to cut the line. The hook is in deep, but it will rust and fall out. In the meantime, getting rid of the line will keep Wilbur from getting entangled in something until the hook comes out. I don't know if Wilbur knows that Dave was trying to help him, but he certainly seems like Dave is his new best friend. Wilbur really likes this one spot of the wreck covered in beautiful orange cup corals. And with the silhouette of the ship in the background, it's just a great shot. This is the kind of cooperative marine life we underwater cinematographers dream about, but rarely get. Okay, so that is the video. And um, in that video, they were talking about, I don't know what this is. It's a device that was on the wreck. Um, that actually is a tool that researchers use to track Goliath groupers. There's a couple of researchers that will bring the fish up onto the surface, onto the boat, and they do measurements, they do um, some samples, and then they put a satellite, well, it's not a satellite tag, it's a pit, it's like a pit tag. It's like, um, like you put in your dog and your cat. So it's got a transmitter and when they swim by that device, it pings it and it lets people or lets the scientists know that that grouper swam by that location. And oh. they actually have those, not just on the caster, but they have them all the way up into the Palm Beach, Jupiter area, and even up into the Carolinas. And they can also use those transmitters on sharks. So a lot of the um, researchers will share that data. So if you, someone doing research on Goliath groupers, they'll see the ping and then they'll share it with uh, those researchers. So that's what yeah, that tonight. device was. It's still there. It is. It's still there. It's probably pretty crusty. They need to go down there and clean it a little bit. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's still functional. I'm not sure. I'll have to ask the Goliath grouper researcher that, um, that we know. Um, and then as far as Goliath grouper research, um, they have said that if you look at the tail pattern of their caudal peduncle, which is the meaty part of their tail, um, it's like a pattern and it's like a thumbprint. So their pattern is very, um, mm -hmm. you know, significant to that particular fish. Um, I'm not sure if there's an ID base like there is with whale sharks or other types of animals like uh, manta rays. Um, and I definitely don't think any researchers doing quite that. I, I know that, um, Dr. Sarah Torres was doing it, but I don't know what she's doing now with it. But um, I will try and find out for you guys. And if I can get that answer, I'll make sure to share it with you guys. Because if you're out there photographing these guys and you get that butt shot, yeah, normally you don't want those shots. But if you get that butt shot, they yeah. want those shots. Um, so let's take a look at the next part of the presentation. I got to close this down, bring this back in. Oh. There it is. Okay. And then, all right. So why are these fish important? Um, let me just, hold on. Let me bring this 
so you guys can see what I wrote. Okay, so these fish are important um, because the Goliath groupers, they actually reached commercial extinction in the late 1980s. I'm not gonna lie, I was born in the 80s, so I was not diving with them, but uh, Alex, were you diving with these guys in the 80s? I, I was diving with them, very hard to find one. Yeah. I, I started diving in the US in the mid 80s, mm -hmm. and it, it was like jackpot to find one Goliath. Mm -hmm. And then for this reason, in 1990, a federal and state ban on killing them was implemented for the U.S. in federal waters and in state waters of Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas, followed by a 1993 ban in the U.S. Caribbean. So 27 years of protection have led to a population increase, although not a recovery to pre-exploitation um, levels in the state of Florida alone. What does that mean? It means that they're not all... They're, they're not seeing a good amount of the breeding population. Uh, these animals take a long time to mature uh, and grow. So uh, if you look at some of these guys that are in the aggregation, not all of them can uh, participate in the ag aggregation. Wilbur is an example of that. He is not at the reproductive age and size that he needs to be. So maybe that's a reason why he's so friendly with us because yeah. he wants to come hang out with divers and not other fish. Maybe now he's getting close to yeah, maybe he is getting closer to that maturity yeah. level. Um, so why do people want to fish them um, to eat? Well, guys, uh, the Goliath grouper, um, they have no nutritional value for humans since they contain levels of mercury that are unsafe for humans consumption, according to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, and the U.S. Department of Health. So that is not a reason to fish them because you really shouldn't be eating consuming this fish. The meat is uh, full of mercury. Um, they're eating our seafood. Well, critics of the Goliath grouper say that the species is overeating and responsible for declining fish and lobster stocks. Yet, actually, scientific data from researchers like Sarah Torres that I talked about earlier um, show that overfishing, not the Goliath grouper, is the reason for declining fish and lobster stocks. So researchers who examine the grouper's stomach contents when they catch them say they actually eat crabs and other bottom-dwelling spiny fish. It's only when um, you have to compete with the fish that they want your lobster or whatever you spear or whatever's on your hook and line. Um, most of the time, they're eating stuff that's down in the sand. They're an ambush predator. What does that mean? They don't like to swim very fast to go catch their prey. What they like to do is they sit and they hang out, and then when something flies by, then they grab it. OK, they also will you'll see them exhibiting where they go to the sand and they grab the sand and they suck it in and they spit the sand out their gills and whatever was in the sand. That's what they're eating. That's why, like I said, they eat the crabs and other bottom, bottom dwelling fish. Um, in this picture, though, he is not eating the fish that's in his mouth. That is a <laughs> little uh, remora and uh, he's cleaning the inside of this fish's mouth. And I'm not sure if this was Wilbur or not. I just know I got it on the caster, but um, it was, I don't think it was Wilbur. So, all right. So what are the current laws? Um, just recently, if you've been paying attention, uh, the Florida Fish and Wildlife, FWC, um, they approved a limited, highly regulated recreational harvest of the Goliath grouper in state waters beginning in spring in 2023. OK, so what does that mean? It means a recreational harvest of up to 200 Goliaths per year. A required recreational Goliath harvest permit and tag will be issued via a random draw of a lottery. To legally harvest the fish, you have to pay. So they're saying that residents will pay $150 for a tag. And if you're a non-resident, $500. So limiting the harvest to one fish per person per open season with permits and tags that are non-transferable. So if you buy the tag and your buddy goes out and fishes and gets it, they're not allowed to use your tag. Hook and line only. So guys, do not go out there with your spear guns. It's hook and line only. And the slot limit of 24 to 36 inches in total length. All right. So it's not those big ones that you're seeing aggregating. It's the smaller ones. So um, the one thing that they uh, wanted to mention is that this will be a season between March through, so March 1st through May 31st. So they're not getting into that Goliath aggregation season. Um, that's permitted in state waters, except for those of Martin County, south through the Atlantic coast of the Keys, and all of St. Lucie River and its 
uh, tributaries and the Dry Tortugas National Park. Harvest will continue to be prohibited in federal waters. So if you guys dive up in the Jupiter area and you dive on that wreck trek, um, I'm totally blanking right now. What, the Bonaire wreck trek. Is that what it's called? Jupiter wreck trek. Uh, that's in federal waters. So um, no fishing allowed there. The post-harvest requirements, if you decide to take a Goliath grouper, is you have to harvest the tag, reporting the data and submitting a fin clip for genetic analysis. So you can't just catch these fish and throw them away. You have to um, do a fin clip for genetic analysis and other things like measurements, okay? So that is the current law that is going to be enacted in spring of 2023. Guys, we did our best as divers to lobby. We went to all the FWC meetings and, you know, fishing um, pressures, um, you know, were high in these meetings, but we came to this, um, you know, yeah. this, this law and, you know, hopefully this does not wipe out the Goliath grouper population. Um, so why protect them? All right. Um, they need the population to increase in numbers still because scientists agree that the current population will probably not last more than one or probably two years after opening to a fishery. So that's why it's fairly um, important for you guys to sign the petitions that you see, go to the meetings and help us save the Goliath grouper. People come from all over the world, all over the nation to see mm -hmm. Goliath grouper spawning in aggregations in the late summer. This brings big dollars, which boosts your local economies. So, I mean, when you think about it, the fish is actually worth more alive than it is dead, okay? Um, Florida FWC has suggested that charging $150 to $500 per fish killed when recreational divers will pay $100 or more for one Goliath grouper sighting. That's from the Mission Blue site um, that reported that, which means a single Goliath grouper can generate as much as $36,500 per year, just a single grouper or more, and then millions of dollars over its lifetime to the local economy. Likewise, one spawning aggregation of several Goliath groupers could generate as much as, sorry, <laughs> I'm all distracted. Okay. Okay, uh, sorry, where are we? Likewise, one spawning aggregation of several <laughs> Goliath groupers could generate as much as uh, 500,000 a year for local dive businesses. So leaving the Goliath groupers alive is seemingly much more lucrative alternative than paying 150 to $500 and a dead fish. Uh, we love this photo here. That's our good friend, Miss Sandra Green. Um, you know, this is my friend Wilbur. Please don't murder him because guys, remember, um, if they go to these sites where these aggregations are and fish, you're going to be able to catch them in a couple of days. And um, remember, you're not supposed to keep any that are above a certain um, uh, size. measurement yeah. size. But a lot of these guys, <coughs> you know, they fight on the line and, and they can get yeah. tangled and get, you know, hooked and they can really get hurt and injured. And then you you really can do some damage. Uh, by the way, that's how Sandra showed up at the FWC meetings. There was half of the room were fishermen, the other half were divers, and she will hold that sign and she fight for Wilbur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what can you do? Support the efforts of people that are doing uh, the work and they're trying to work with the FWC and the fishermen. Guys, don't go on sites and, you know, bash people because everybody has a right to their opinion. But if you love Goliath Groupers and you want to dive with them, the best way to speak up for them is signing those petitions and going to the meetings, okay? Be the voice for these animals, all right? Um, just released back in July of this summer, and on the 13th, a proposed rule to um, increase protections during the aggregation time period. So between July 15th and October 15th, the rule would prohibit fishing within a thousand feet of the MG 111 and Warrior Reef in Jupiter, the Anna Cecilia and the Mitzba wrecks up in Palm, or, yeah, Palm Beach, and the Castor and the Bud Bar wrecks here in Boynton Beach. So um, we got our fingers crossed that that mm -hmm. is going to uh, that rule is going to be put in place. Okay, uh, remember we have until next aggregation for us to be worried. This aggregation they are not allowed to fish um, currently. Okay. 
All right, so questions. Um, thank you, really quick, before we take some questions, we wanna say thank you to everybody who has photos of uh, Wilbur and other um, videos. So Alan Egan, Wayne McWilliams, Sandra Edwards, the Palm Beach Diving um, Association, Palm Beach County Diving Association, and Blue World TV. Thank you guys so much. Um, it really helped us uh, bring a great presentation for you guys tonight to life. And we also had pictures from Alex, our guest presenter, and myself, Nicole Heath. So um, thank you again for those photos. Um, also, uh, questions. So let's go ahead and field some of your questions. Let me bring you and I back. So let's, doop, there we go. All right, so um, one thing that I noticed you guys were talking about is, um, you're asking, uh, you know, what what's the the decline um, of these fish? Um, why do fishermen want to fish them? Um, like we said before, uh, there's some controversy. People think that they are a nuisance because when they're doing fish in line uh, fishing, they're taking fish off of their lines. Yes, that can happen, but it also happens. Sharks do it too, you know. So um, it's not, you know. It's not a topic we like to discuss, so I'm sorry that, that we don't have a great answer, but Alex? I, I, I actually have a, another one also. Another that is going on is uh, some fishing charters, they take it as a challenge, very sporty, to try to bring a 500-pound Goliath to the surface. That's true. So I've seen it done before. These guys are responsible fishermen because once they get to the surface, they get the picture, they try to, you know, they poke a hole and they send it back down. But in the process, they're damaging their jaws. They're abusing a poor fish that all he's trying to do is procreate. And it's just an Okay. Is what's going on. Um, one thing I want to say, thank you, John Riker, for watching because he's Mr. Scientist for 4C. He's oh, one of our 4C instructors. And you. he did say, yes, the aging ear bones, the otoliths, are how you tell the age of a Goliath grouper. So okay. I was right. Yes. Okay. Don't get those from <laughs> Wilbur, please. <laughs> okay. So um, right now, some of the divers that are tuning in, they're telling us that uh, we definitely are seeing them up in Jupiter with um, big numbers. So thank you guys for reporting that. Okay. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. We've yeah, got, go ahead. Yeah. I have a message here from Mariana. Uh, you were impressed about the 200 and yes, that was 10 years ago, 200 in one wreck all around it. Um, Bill Utterback, you have a question. Does Wilbur's behavior change the behaviors of the other Goliaths around him? Oh, that's an awesome question, but Honestly, God, I haven't had that much of observation where I can see. I, I mean, now that you mentioned that, long time ago, I remember others, Goliath, looking at Wilbur with, what the heck is wrong with this guy? What's going on? And there were some Goliaths that they were observing as playing with Wilbur, per se. Um, since we're down there only for like 30 minutes at the time, I can't tell you what happened with those other Goliaths, but that's a great question. And I did observe others Goliath paying special attention to Wilbur. It's like, what's going on? <laughs> you know, that's a good question, Erica Allen. They mm -hmm. want to know is Wilbur a female or male? Oh, I think Nate's know that <laughs> <laughs> because I think they go through a transformation. They do. So the biology people on here, maybe, uh, we can get you guys to, to question. I, I want to make sure I got this right. They're able to switch their um, their sexual orientation. They yes. have both male and female parts. So uh, <laughs> so but we don't know if Wilbur is a male or female at the moment. I don't remember at what time in, in their life they changed to, but I think Wilbur is in that process sometime. <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> um, okay, so... Here's the thing, guys. Um, there's been scientists that have done studies uh, that the groupers will change colors during the mating season. So if you're on the wrecks and you see um, ones that are really bright white uh, versus ones that are really dark, dark, dark um, brown um, or sometimes even <laughs> black in color, that will kind of indicate the, mm -hmm. the sex of the animal. And actually, um, there is a – well, I don't know because it's been a while since I've dove up there, but there was a Goliath grouper named Braveheart. 
up in Jupiter. I think he used to be up on the MG 111. So any divers can help me out with that. Um, basically, Braveheart had one side that was white and one side that was dark. And so he had the line right in the middle of his face. And that's why they called him Braveheart. And he was really well known up there. He wasn't super friendly, but he definitely was seen up there. Um, another friendly Goliath grouper that people might um, know stories about is Shadow. Shadow. So Shadow was a Goliath grouper that hung out on the dive site um, Shark Canyon up in the Palm Beach area. Mm -hmm. And for years, uh, you would drop down on Shark Canyon. He'd come running over to the divers. Yeah. He would bounce between you. And then when you were done, he would stay and you guys would go up. Um, unfortunately, what we have heard is that Shadow was um, spearfished by somebody who maybe thought that they the fish was going to attack him. Um, but they did uh, they did note that that fish is no longer around anymore, and um, that's an unfortunate thing. Um, I actually a funny story about Shadow. Uh, one time, I was trying to grab a lobster from underneath a rock on that dive site, and I didn't realize it at the time, but I've got Jeff Nelson, one of our dive instructors. He's got his GoPro and he's videotaping me because I had no idea, but Shadow was right here on my shoulder. I had no idea it was there. And I'm trying to get this lobster out. And the minute I go to get him out and then go to grab the snare, Delicious. what does he do? <laughs> Whoom! And he grabs that lobster and then he does a circle around. And this is all on video. He does a circle around and then in front of the GoPro, he spits the lobster out at Jeff and then sucks it right back in. Like, no, 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 I got your lobster. <laughs> got your... That's why it's called Shadow. <laughs> yep, he yeah. follows you around. So um, pretty cool story. Um, there's some other uh, groupers that are very friendly. I don't know how much they've been named, um, mm -hmm. but you know, the biggest thing is, is that Wilbur is an ambassador for the species. That's why he's important. That's why you guys should know about him love him and want to help protect him because he's the ambassador. He is going to help protect that species. Um, okay. So let's see. We've got some other questions here. Doesn't the dominant Goliath grouper in the group morph into a female for mating and reproduction during the aggregation? Good question. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry, Randy. <laughs> We're not um, Goliath Grouper scientists, but I will get that information for you. But like I said, they do turn colors. And I don't know if they actually are dominant. Um, they, they don't really show dominant behaviors when they're hanging out. Um, personal experience, there's usually these really dark ones. And you're talking 500 pounds, maybe I'm sure. Maybe it's 800 pounds. And they used to sit on the bow of the caster when the bow was upright and they will not move. You're trying to get close to them. They will not move. They will, they will push you. They won't even bark at you. Yeah. Uh, so maybe those are dominant, but they're usually dark color and they're huge. Yeah. Um, Erica Allen has a good point. Divers, we should all put in for one of those permits and not use the permit. Wow, what a great idea. I mean, if you live here in South Florida, I'd pay 150 mm -hmm. bucks to have a permit and not use it. That's a good idea. Um, this other a question that came in, Mary Lynn, are the smaller ones full of mercury? I think they're not as mercury driven, but because of what they eat um, through the food chain, they do get um, some mercury, but probably not as much as the bigger fish. Okay, uh, let's see. She, she should start a, a found me to get money to buy those permits. Yeah, I would, I would put found money. me, yeah. right? Okay, a GoFundMe to buy permits. That's a good there idea. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm trying to, you guys have a lot of questions. This is great. Yeah, I'm trying to catch up with this. <laughs> hold on, guys, hold on. You guys have a lot. And if you guys uh, have more questions, you can always find us. Obviously, you know to find me at 4C or, you know, uh, Captain Alex, he's on the boats up here in Boynton, so. Basically, you can come out and dive with him and, and uh, yeah. they will. Okay, great. John, uh, not an expert on Goliaths, but many groupers are, oh gosh, proto, oh, proto something, hemraphrodites. They first mature as females and then change into males later on. There it goes. That's why <laughs> Wilbur used to follow Protogenous, okay. <laughs> okay, so... Um, all right, guys, I want to show you one more thing. So let me bring in over here. Okay, so this is our 4C website. Okay, there it is. And um, if you guys go here to our event page, 
We have information about um, the Goliath groupers. Uh, and if you want to, if you take photos, you can enter into our Goliath grouper photo contest. We're um, running it through the month of August and September. And let me click on to there so you guys can see. Um, the uh, rules for the contest are right here, and it's really easy to submit. You just um, fill out your contact information, choose the photo, and then put a caption for your entry and enter it. And then what we're going to do is have people vote. And you can go to the vote area here and start voting on some of your favorite Goliath grouper photos. Um, please, 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 only photos underwater, no fishing, no spear fishing photos of Goliath groupers. Um, and only one photo per person. Uh, we are doing, um, the winner receives a $100 gift card to 4 c and with some other fun <coughs> items. So we are getting some stuff together for you guys. So if you want to enter, you can go to our website and find that link. So let me go back to our website. Something else to pay attention to is right here, guys. Um, we have our Goliath grouper dives. Uh, we have one this Sunday. We actually only have one spot left on that one. We have September 3rd and the 24th. These are um, event dives, meaning like we are advertising them. But guys, if you want to get out here and see these groupers, you can't make it out on those dates. Um, pretty much every day, the boats from between Boynton and Palm Beach and Jupiter are running out to the wrecks to go see these guys because divers want to dive with them. Okay. So make sure that you go out and dive with them, support local tourism. Um, and we, uh, appreciate you guys, um, coming out and diving with 4C and the boats that are here. Um, Alex, I have a, another question for you. Um, yes. is there anything that you want people to know about Wilbur, a funny story about him? Mm, funny story. I have so many stories and I'm trying to figure out which one is the funniest one, but I, I don't know. I mean, go look for him, find him on a different dive site and tell Wilbur, hey, follow me. Let's go back to the caster and I will be on my scooter with my camera in front of me and he will swim with his dorsal fin against my chest all the way scootering back to the caster. Oh, I know. Um, we were talking. Crazy. <laughs> we were talking about he has a Facebook page. Oh, yeah, we got that, too. That's something that I created when I first met him back on 2013. I created a Facebook page that I haven't been doing my homework. It's a little <laughs> outdated. But um, if you guys want to post in there, feel free to contact me, and I'll give you full rights to post pictures and do whatever you guys want. I promise you, as soon as I found it, I'm going to try to measure him again and, and update that Facebook page. Uh, you can see in Facebook page, there's a little video, and you can see a video of Wilbur uh, taking oh, yeah. a I bubble forgot. bath. Yeah, I forgot. We we have that one. Um, hold on, guys. Should let me, we show it? Yeah, let's show that video. It, it, it was kind of weird. I thought, oh, let me see if I can share my regulator with Wilbur and see what happened. And he loved it. He couldn't run away, but he just kept putting his face down. He's like, feed Here. me more bubbles. And eventually, he'll feed them back to you so there's that video <laughs> and he he blows bubbles too he's like i want to blow bubbles what the heck <laughs> and and you'll see him lowering his head like hey i, I want more May, maybe that was something good he got a little extra oxygen and this is <laughs> you see he's going down he's like give me more <laughs> okay um yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, so it's an amazing fish. I mean, I, I've been in situations when I'm doing my safety stop and he's just swimming around me like, I want to do a safety stop too. Okay. And there's that Facebook page, guys. So, mm -hmm. you know, help Alex. He, he's, you know, out there on the boats. He doesn't have time to post photos. But if you have photos of Wilbur, make sure you post them, tag Wilbur. And uh, make sure you like the, pho the, the photos so that you keep seeing them so you can see where he might be. And uh, again, let us know, even if you don't take photos, but you see him, can you let us know what dive site he might be on so that Alex can go out and say hi to him and, and do some more uh, measurements? Because he hasn't measured him this year. So he needs to check and see how big this uh, grouper's gotten. So, um, all right. So that is the Facebook page. All right. Um, any other questions? I'm going to go back over here. Wait, there we go. 
<laughs> oh gosh, you should have taught him how to blow bubble rings. That's, uh, that's my next one. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay any other questions here oh someone was asking was shadow and gary the grouper the same goliath grouper gary has a facebook page um i don't know gary <coughs> i i don't know i never followed that facebook page anybody mm. else know uh the answer to that question um let's see okay any other questions you see coming in <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of familiar names there, so I want to thank everybody for being part of this. Uh, Absolutely. It gave me a chance to get in touch with people that I haven't seen in a long time. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, so guys, since I don't see any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in... Oh, wait, hold on. There we go. All right, we're going to do our raffle. And guys, tonight, I am going to raffle off. A chance to dive with the Goliath Groupers. No way. That's right. So I'm going to go ahead and raffle off one dive trip to go see these Goliath Groupers. So let's go ahead and see who the lucky winner is. Here's everyone's names in the random name picker. And here we go. Woo! Who's our winner? Alex. <laughs> uh, <no>. Lisette. <laughs> Lisette. Lisette, you are our winner. Yay. Go ahead and say woohoo. All right, we wanna see your name in the comments. Okay, before we end tonight, I wanna know, have you seen Wilbur? Have you dove with Wilbur? Everybody in the comments section, give a thumbs up if you have done a dive and met Wilbur. We wanna know, all right? Go ahead, guys, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys so thank you so much for tuning in again if you want to get out there and see goliath groupers maybe wilbur if he comes back to the caster give us a call at 4c we can get you booked on a dive to go see him all right woohoo! everyone's saying yay all right guys tune in uh for our next presentation coming up soon uh in september is going to be shark month at 4c so we'll have some great presentations lined up for you and again thank you to everybody who tuned in we'll see you later thank you alex <laughs> you're welcome i'll see you at the boynton marina <laughs> take care guys